Okay, instead of one long video, we're going to try something new now. I was up to visit Bruce at his fish room this past week, and uh, we had quite an interesting long conversation, which would have been one very long video. But instead, I thought I'd chop it into segments. So this is segment number one. We're talking about Bruce's 55-gallon fish tank. Actually, it's a fish garden with the plants being as attractive as the fish themselves are. So join me as we listen in on the conversation that Bruce and I had this past week. Well, here we are in Bruce's fish room again. We haven't been here in a long while with the camera on. And so Bruce, again, introduce us to the tank we're looking at here on the far wall. Well, that, that's the biggest tank. That's the 55 gallon. And uh, it's, it's got mainly discus in there, but there's a few varieties of tetra as well. And I think there's one uh, gourami, one pearl gourami. I had two pearl gouramis, but one of them died, and I couldn't figure out why. But sometimes you just lose fish, and there's no no good reason for why it just happens. Mm-hmm. I love the coloration of your plants. You've got such a variety of shapes and colors that it's really impressive. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Why, why are you so successful with well, your planting? I think it's the CO2 that I add to the tank. And uh, you're talking about this tank has got a CO2 canister, right? That's right. As opposed to the liquid CO2 that I'm using. Yes. But well, I use the liquid uh, as well. Okay, so you supplement. Supplement with that. And I also uh, supplement the tank with. Uh, some feed for the plant life as well. Okay, and what are you I using use for that? Chem product, Flourish. Okay. And I also use iron and potassium. And uh, there's one other thing that I use. Now, why are you adding iron and potassium? Given I thought Flourish was sort of a complete fertilizer. It's uh, not really. Not really. Okay. No, no. I even have. Uh, one C chem that's uh, trace elements. I use that once a week. I've heard of that, but I've not uh, invested in doing that. Just didn't feel that it was really necessary, but you're saying you found uh, good results I, I with very, it. Well, flourish I use twice a week, iron I use twice a week, potassium twice a week, and the uh, trace elements once a week. And so I, for I do that on a uh, daily basis. And, and just rotate it around. I'm sorry, follow me again. You do that on a daily basis, but follow it around. What's that mean? Well, Flourish I'll use Monday and okay. Thursday. I got you. Iron I use Tuesday and uh, Friday. All right, so you're not using everything every day, no, no. but you're doing something every day. That's right. I got it. All right. And I think that's what keeps all the plants doing so well. And they certainly are doing well. Every plant that you've ever put in there just thrives so beautifully. Yeah. I it, just worked out a system that's worked really well for me, and I just stay with it. Well, no sense fighting success, right? No. no I, use, I use a capful of each of these uh, ingredients. Just one capful? Yeah. Is that what the that's dosage all. is called for? Or is that what Not you really. Do? Yeah. They, they tell you to uh, adjust it to what your tanks will do best with. Okay. But that's worked out well for me. Now this tank has been established how long now? Roughly. Oh, I'd say about a year and a half. And it is gorgeous. I mean, I love it every time. And, and those discus, are those, did you buy discus last time we were over at Discus Madness? No, no not last time. These were from before. Yeah. I've never gotten into discus. I, I, I think they're beautiful, but I'm more into the smaller fish. Right. So I'm really amazed to see the it's coloration. The angel fish. Yeah. Angels, angels grow about the same size as discus. True, true. And somehow I like angels and I never got into discus. I okay. always thought they were a more complex fish to worry about, okay. but maybe not. Maybe not. And it's interesting, the different styles. Your style shows off every plant. I mean, I, can, I could zoom in on each one of your plants and we would see that one plant. And well, that's, that's because I weed once a month. Now, let's talk about weeding. You and I, well, let me go I back mean, to what I... I, I throw out plants that would just disturb you no end. I would, I can't 
throw out a plant. I that, that's why I have a yeah. forest in my tanks versus yeah, your show tanks here. I understand that. So, well, mine, mine gets very overgrown. I mean, I, I weeded out last uh, I don't know, Thursday or Friday, and then I made a water. I do the water change once a month. Only once a month. Seventy percent of the water I change once a month. Once a month, huh? Well, of course, you don't have the crowd of fish in your tanks that I do. I, I know I oh, That's true. I've got too many fish in there, but at the same time, they seem to do okay. But I do a, a third water change once a week. Okay. And I'm just looking there. That Amazon sword plant is so gorgeous. In fact, no, there's one, two, well, there's three plants there, isn't there? Yeah, like that Amazon sword. When, when I weeded out this past uh, week, I probably took about... 12 leaves off that plant. You just keep coming back. And take you, the outer leaves off that are older. Right. And uh, you know, it just regenerates itself very, very quickly. Now, talk to me about, and I, I never get the words right, but the curly leaf, thin leafed plant that I'm focused on just to the left of that Amazon. Yeah. A, a, say the word. Aponagata. Aponagata. I, I, I just. For some reason, I have trouble saying that. I want to say it differently. Okay. Aponegetta. Aponegetum crispum. Crispus. Okay. Now, your plant is doing beautifully here. I, I'm guessing, I'm looking at the root system, and it's probably got maybe 10 uh, leaves on it. I'd and say that's probably about right. And they're, they're doing beautifully. Yeah. Uh, I was just telling Bruce that in my tank now, uh, my 55 gallon, that plant has just about taken over the entire tank. Okay. I mean, it's it's sitting in the right-hand side of the tank. It's got at least 20 to 30 leaves, and as opposed to these leaves here, which are what I would normally see, and maybe mine's a different variety, I don't know, but it's the same type of plant, uh, I've got it, and um, the leaves are much wider, and right now, as you can see on my YouTube... The leaves on yours are much wider on mine. Yeah, on mine, on mine are much wider, okay. Okay. and as a result, I would say they're four times as wide as your leaves are, so it may be a different variety. Could be. Okay, but right now there's got to be like 30 leaves, and they're toward the front of the tank, and they just block out half the tank. That's how. Okay. And you might have undulatus. Upon again, undulatus. Okay, I don't I get past one. the first word on these plants. I have, I have one of those plants in this tank too, but it's it's uh, in the shade to the point that it, it hasn't been growing. Uh huh. But I think it's way off to the left in the back. Well, it's interesting because even your smaller plants show off in this way you've got this laid out. Yeah. And, as and saying, anything, anything you see that you like, I'll send you home with. <laughs> You're very generous. And I, I think I have to uh, time my visits with your pruning. <laughs> Although I have to admit, at this particular point, I would have a problem because I don't know where I would put them. I know, that's, that's a problem. And I love the problem. I really yeah, do. I know you do. But our styles are very different. Your tanks are truly show tanks in my mind. They're, okay. they're set back, they're spread out, you can see everything, and every plant is a, a show plant of its own. Yeah, but it's in, a real jungle within a month's time before I weed out and it gets overgrown. Well, you know, maybe I should try doing that. I, I, I don't, uh, I do take off dead leaves. Okay, that's not a problem. But at the same time, mine I would consider a jungle type environment versus what you have here. Yours are more of a, a show situation as opposed to the jungles that well, I have. Mine gets to be a jungle within a month's time. Okay. That's how much the plant life grows. I'll have to catch you sometime at the jungle stage just yeah, to see what you're talking about because. It seems like you always come just. Just there for <laughs> read it out and uh, change the water. I think what it is when I call and say, hey, I'll come on up, you say, oh, I better get the tanks straightened out before Jim gets here, no, he's about to turn his camera just, on. <laughs> it just happens that the timing has been such that I have weeded out before you come. Okay. Well, I'm really curious because up top there, and you really can't see it on the camera, but uh, the plants that you've seen on my videos, uh, that came from that cuttings that we got at Discus Madness right. that I was so disappointed in because they had that beautiful huge plant that I said I would give a hundred dollars for if I had a tank to put it in right. uh, and it was worth every penny of that 
uh, has done, despite my disappointment when I got home and realized I only had like send seven cuttings from their big plant, which is the way they do it. Yeah. I had one big tank that had just the one huge plant. I and I asked the guy, I said, you know, if you were to sell that, because they don't sell the roots. No. They just clip the plants and give you a bunch. That's and right. it was like seven or eight bucks. And I thought, oh, geez, that was disappointing. I usually expect to get the roots, you know, et cetera. Yeah. But the plan has proved to be very, uh, grows very well. And so I'm not disappointed in the long term. Okay. And so uh, when I told Bruce about it, he said, oh, you have to bring me some cuttings. So we've got three small cuttings here, which will go in our history vault. And sometime That's in the right. future, we'll see how they grow. So we'll oh, yeah. start a yeah. story here, okay? That's right. But it's a very colorful plant, and it's done very well. And I've actually propagated into the corner tank from the bow tank. Yeah. And both of them have just keep growing to the top, and I clip them off. And what you've got there is well, just three generous clippings. Actually, when, when I weed out, a lot of the plants that I weed, I'll cut the uh, top half off, and uh, I'll just replant that that portion right and new roots develop from that I throw the rooted section out myself why would you do that well, the rooted I, section is where I mean go ahead well, if you leave the rooted section in yeah you know there would be um, outcroppings that would grow off the main stem but uh, I, I like to see it just grow straight up from the way they would normally grow in nature and that's why I, I throw away the uh, rooted section huh. and just replant the cut it, cut it section just like you did with uh, the discus yeah. place. Well, I, I certainly replant the cuttings, okay. but I never take the roots out. I figure that's the mother plant. Well, that's and, true. And so it tends to grow back, and that's why I get more cuttings. But again... But the cuttings themselves will develop whole new root systems on them. Oh, yeah. And I think they grow faster that way anyway. You think so? I think so. All right. Well, yeah. you say your results certainly support your belief. Let's say yeah. that. All right. Well, it's just that's the experience I've had over the years that that works for me, and I like the look that it gives to the uh, to the tank to have them grow that way. You know, Bruce. Let's go back for just a minute and talk about life experience. I. I